Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and in today's video I'm doing a full face of makeup with products exclusively from Dollar Tree. I'm also going to be doing my skin prep with products from Dollar Tree. I have absolutely nothing on my face right now so we need to get into that ASAP. Before we do, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you're notified of my future posts. I believe I'm going to be posting every Sunday and Wednesday but I will let you guys know if something changes. First things first, we need to put the hair back out of the face. All right, now that I look 10 years old, let's get started. We're prepping the skin with a hyaluronic acid serum. This is hyaluronic acid and vitamin C as well. It looks like something from The Ordinary is what it looks like to me. It's got like a silver stripe instead of gray, but very similar packaging to The Ordinary. And when you're applying hyaluronic acid, you want to do that to wet skin. So I always keep a spray bottle of water in my bathroom, and I just mist my face first before I put the hyaluronic acid products on. Now I'm going to take some of the serum, put it into my hands. You guys, I have no idea what these products are going to be like, if anything is going to be sketchy and whatnot. This hyaluronic acid serum kind of feels like the one that I use from The Ordinary. I don't think it's fragranced. And I always prep my skin with hyaluronic acid because it makes the skin a little bit tacky and then the makeup sticks to that really well. But another reason is that it plumps your skin. So it pulls moisture to the surface and like holds it there. So it's really good to prep with. And I make sure I kind of rub this in nicely. I have also Age Defy Dark Circle and Puffiness Serum, like little roller ball pin. I'm gonna use that underneath my eyes. Lord knows I could use some de-puffing. I woke up this morning and had some serious bags. They've gone down quite a bit, but it was rough there for a second. And another thing that Dollar Tree had, they had a tiny shade roller. <laughs> so we're gonna roll my face out with that and kind of massage that product in that we just put on. I looked up online the best way to use this and it said to go from the center of the face outward. The claims on jade rollers is that they're supposed to support lymphatic drainage. I don't know how well they actually work, but they do feel good. I'll give you that. Dr. Dre, who is a dermatologist here on YouTube that I follow or that I'm subscribed to, she says that you should do some aerobic exercise if you want to encourage lymphatic drainage and that's the best way to do it, not jade rollers or anything like that. But I digress. The last thing I do for skin prep always is I use a lip scrub and then I just leave it on through the duration of me putting on my makeup. This is one from LA Colors and it's Cool Mint. This could be sick, I don't know. Let's see. I don't feel anything scrubby about it. No, nothing scrubby about this, but got like a slight grit to it just now, but no. That's a pass, um, but I do love the one from Revlon. It's like a sugar scrub um, and it is freaking awesome. Now, I was going to do kind of the Scott Barnes method like I did in my first video of putting cream contour under foundation, but I have a lot of powder products that are contour. So I think I'm going to lean more on powder products for contour this time. I have two of these little babies, some little palette and then I have a couple colors of pressed powder that might work for contour also but before we do any of that we need some foundation that's what we're going to start with I bought two foundations because I had no idea how it was going to match my skin tone in there there was, it was just going to be impossible basically everything that was skin related was just the color of a peach crayon and I'm like okay that's not going to work for hardly anyone but I think I've got something that might work if I mix these two together. One is a BB Beauty Benefit Cream and the shade is Light One. This is skincare and makeup from Sassy Chic. This one is also from Sassy Chic. This is a moisturizing foundation in the shade Medium One. It's the only one that I could find that wasn't just straight up pink in the tube. Now I'm gonna mix these two together. I have some down on my palette. 
don't know if you can see what those two look like. <laughs> Hopefully if I mix that together, that's like somewhat close to the color of my skin. I think the foundation is probably the thing I'm most scared of in this entire batch of products because a lot of these other things you can make work, but foundation, uh, you know, that's kind of sketchy. I'm actually going to be using a brush that I bought at Dollar Tree and it's an e.l.f. stipple brush. Basically, it's just like a dual fiber foundation brush where some of the fibers are short and then some are long. You can use this type of brush to really lightly apply foundation and it's actually a really good one for the Scott Barnes method, so keep that in mind. We'll see if this one works and maybe y'all can go to Dollar Tree and get one. I'm gonna mix this foundation together. Oh, the consistency of this stuff is strange. It looks more like a food product than it does foundation. All right, let's see what we can do with this foundation. I'm gonna pick some up with brush on my palette. Oh, even the sound this makes on the palette is not promising. What's that shade like? That's not too bad. look like I have tiger stripes with this brush and how streaky it's applying this makeup. I'm gonna need a beauty blender if I'm going to salvage this. I don't know if y'all can see the texture of this stuff on camera, but it's not super flattering on the skin. <laughs> Ooh, and everywhere you touch it with a brush, it just immediately like moves everything you have there. I don't know if it's the brush or the product or both. The way it's going, I'm gonna be a grease ball from this moisturizing foundation. <laughs> Luckily, I have nowhere to go. All right, do you guys shop at Dollar Tree? You need to let me know in the comments. And if you do, what do you buy at Dollar Tree? I typically go there for like notebooks or uh, wrapping stuff. They have a lot of wrapping stuff and Christmas stuff like um, tree decorations and stuff like that. What else? I buy a lot of candy at Dollar Tree. <laughs> I can't resist. <laughs> Okay, so I've got the foundation down and now I'm just going to try to even it out a little bit and cover up some of those brush strokes with a beauty sponge. Hope this stuff doesn't break me out. <laughs> ah. So the coverage on this foundation ended up being kind of basically just like a tinted moisturizer, which is what I figured. That's okay though, because we can kind of build it up with some of the powders that I bought. I'm gonna I'll wipe this stuff off. And then I also got a lip oil from LA Colors and it is vanilla. Let's see how this is. Oh, that actually smells really good. Like a lip smackers one that I used to be obsessed with that was like frosting or something like that. Yum. I want more of that. Mm -hmm. Lip oil is nice. It's not like sticky or anything like gloss, so. That's a plus. Next up is under eye concealing and I'm kind of terrified because I'm using an LA Colors contour stick in the shade light, but this is like a peach color. Hopefully that will be good for underneath the eye for color correcting, but I don't know how dark or light this is going to be. Okay, that's not bad. Not the most coverage you've ever seen in your life, but this is technically like a highlight stick. It's not even a concealer. I could not find a single concealer in a shade even close to what I would need for underneath my eye. Everything was like a medium tan shade. I think that's as good as it's gonna get on the under eye coverage. I'm just gonna try to blend this out and hope that these two waxy formulas, the foundation and the highlight cream, let's hope they just get along. Okay, well, I guess that was kind of something. Not really. Moving on to setting the under eye before all of this creases to Hades. I'm gonna use a Real Techniques uh, setting brush. I love this one. Um, it's the 402. 
And you guys, Real Techniques, I don't know if you noticed in my first video, but I use a ton of their brushes and I think they're great and very reasonably priced. Okay, so I'm gonna go into this, ooh. I'm gonna go into both highlight shades in these two palettes and hope for the best. Oh my goodness, this stuff under the eye is so waxy, it's just like sticky. Did that do anything? Oh my god. Okay, that did basically nothing. I figured there was some pigment in these, but not at all. It's like a bunch of product comes off, and then when you put it on, it's like nothing ever happened. Yeah, and this foundation looks like I'm wearing moisturizer. Shoot, I hope one of these other powders works because otherwise we're going down a scary road. I'm gonna put some highlight in the center of my forehead to set. It just looks really yellow. <laughs> Hopefully this stuff will settle in and look a little bit better, but right now, oh, there's no brightness whatsoever underneath the eyes, or at least that's the way it looks to me. I don't know how it's reading on camera yet, but we're moving on to setting the rest of the face, and I'm gonna use a beauty sponge and go into this pressed powder from LA Colors. It's in the shade Beige. Again, the most neutral product that I could find. Heck, I guess you're better off sticking with powder products, like pressed powder from there, instead of some moisturizing foundation, because there's definitely more coverage in this. This is gonna be a totally different color than my body. Uh, good thing I'm not going anywhere after this. I am feeling so powdery right now. Ugh, like my skin is like, let me out. I feel like I had to do it. Like there was no coverage to that foundation whatsoever. We're gonna move on to kind of bronzing and I've got a couple different things we're gonna use for this. One, I've got a pressed powder in the shade tan that's a little bit darker than my skin tone. And then I've also got a tiny bronzer that just says bronzer, literally, no shade. That looks like that. It's a little bit darker, more of a normal bronzer shade. And then I've also got my contour powders. I've got kind of a neutral one and then one that's more ash. So between those, I feel like we should be able to figure out something for bronzing. Um, I'm gonna take a powder brush from Real Techniques. This one is shaped kind of like an oval, so I can do a little bit of hugging curves on the face like this. So first I'm gonna go into the shade Tan and the pressed powder. I'm gonna pick some up. Oof. I don't know how pigmented this stuff is. Tap that off. I think that's doing a little bit of something. What I'm gonna try to do is kind of layer light amounts of powder to do my contour and whatnot. Do some on the cheeks. It's already starting to look better. I think I actually really like the color of this tan powder. Over the top of my correct foundation color, I think it would look really good. <laughs> Let's do the nose. On the neck here. Back to our conversation about Dollar Tree. Definitely let me know what you buy there and if you go or if you're one of those people who absolutely refuses. Um, I go because some random stuff that I buy there, I really only like spending a buck on it. Like I'll get notebooks for work and whatnot, like notepads, um, like I said, and wrapping stuff. like. I'm fine with just spending a buck on those things. But there's also some really interesting stuff at Dollar Tree. Like in the like medicine aisle, there was an off-brand uh, neti pot, and it was called a Yeti pot. <laughs> I'll put a picture up of this thing. It was literally somebody dressed in a Yeti suit. <laughs> so ridiculous, but hilarious to me for whatever reason. They also have perfume that's called Nice lady. Oh, Jerry, she's a nice lady. Maybe I need some of that. I'm gonna go into this darker bronzer, tiniest bronzer you've ever seen, and just get a little bit on my brush and kind of intensify the shadows on my cheeks and whatnot. Ooh. She's got 
kind of pigmented. I'm having to go super light with this. I actually really like the color of this bronzer and I think it's blending okay. I might be able to use that as like a little travel bronzer or something, save some space in my makeup bag. I'm just gonna toast the edges of my forehead here. I think I'm gonna leave those other two contour products alone at this point. I don't think I need anything else. I'm pretty bronzed up and contoured, especially on my cheeks. So let's move on to some blush. And this is just like the bronzer, it just says blush. It's kind of a pretty pink there. I'm picking up some blush with a complete coverage brush from Real Techniques. It's a 221. It's actually a foundation brush, but I'm gonna see if I can kind of stipple some blush onto my cheeks. And I'm gonna kind of. I just had a little bit of powder left from when I set my whole face and I'm just kind of cleaning up the contour and blush a little bit. I actually really like the color of that blush. I've been super into pink blush lately, so that might be a good one that can come with me as a little travel. Okay, next let's move on to eyes. I have several products we're gonna be using for eyes, so it's gonna be just layered up to high heavens. I have a smudge pot from e.l.f. in this shade Cruisin' Chic. It's almost like a, I don't even know how to describe this shade. I'll just swatch it for you on my hand. It's like ish rose gold, but not super bright. And then I've got a liquid shadow here, a molten liquid shadow from e.l.f. in the shade rose gold. And this one is like a true rose gold. So I might do that smudge pot all over the lid and then pop the rose gold metallic shadow in the center of my lid. I think that would be perfect. Okay, so I have two eye palettes here and they're both tiny, like little minis. This is a peach palette and I actually played around with this one earlier. And then we have the berry eye palette, which I have not cracked into yet. Let's do that. So this has got some purples and mauves. And I think I'm gonna work from this one today. And I'm just gonna kind of build up some color around the crease and then go in with my more cream and liquid products on top of that. I'm gonna get this big tapered brush to start off the crease. And I'm actually gonna use the bronzer that I use, the darker bronzer, mm -hmm. this little guy. I'm gonna break a nail opening it. So I'm gonna dip into here, kind of coat my brush. Tap it off and go to town in the crease. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm blending up into the eyebrow and then on the outer corner. Okay, now I'm just going to go into my berry palette. I'm gonna pick some of these two colors up right here on a Morphe M518 and then tap them off. And then go into the crease and just be a little more concentrated on defining the crease with that color. Now these shadows do have a little kickback in the pants, but not too bad. I figured they would be way more dusty. And they're not terrible to blend either. If you really want to travel light and you don't want to take a palette, but you want to have several fun colors of shadow, this is actually not bad.
Okay, now I'm going to take a clean brush and just kind of clean up around what I've already done. Make sure it's pretty blended. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do the lower lash line. I think I want to start again with some bronzer. I'm going to kind of smoke it out, I think. Okay, that looks pretty good. I just used that same 518 brush from Morphe that I used to do the kind of cranberry color. And I picked up some bronzer and I'm just going on the lower lash line with that. Okay, now I'm going to take kind of this smudge brush here and go into those cranberry shades that I was using and go on the lower lash line kind of in tight. I'm just blending those together there. What do you guys think so far? Okay, now I'm gonna move on to the lid. We're gonna go into this smudge pot from e.l.f. And I'm just gonna take kind of a flat synthetic brush and dip in. I'm gonna go all over the lid with this shade. Okay, well I don't feel like that's going anywhere, so that's a good thing. <laughs> I'm just going to take that M518 brush that I've been using and kind of blend the smudge pot shadow and what I already put down earlier, the powder. Not bad at all. I think what I want to do is do this rose gold in the center and then even maybe go in the inner corner with one of these gold shades from the berry palette. That kind of got everywhere, but it's cute. Okay, I'm not mad about this at all. I think this is pretty good, actually. Hmm. Okay, Elf. Um, now what's next? Let me see what these shades actually swatch like that I'm thinking of using on the inner corner. I can barely get my finger in the pan to swatch it. Okay, those are pretty weak sauce. I don't even know if they pick up on camera. Hmm. Let's see what our powder highlight looks like. I have the shade Shine Bright from LA Colors. It's a powder highlight. Maybe this will be better for inner corner. Let's see. Whoa. Yikes. That's some serious highlight right there. See what that swatch is like. Dang, that's like a bright gold highlight. It's almost like duochrome, like greenish gold. It reminds me of one I have from Makeup Revolution that I really like actually. Hmm. Okay, well let's use that for inner corner and then also I'm gonna highlight with this. Okay, I'm gonna take my some on my finger. Whoa, y'all see that? Okay, well that just quickly took over the entire look. So that kind of changed directions on me because I didn't really do inner corner highlight, I did like the whole inner corner. <laughs> okay, now I wanna do a little bit of brow bone highlight with that as well. I'm gonna take a tiny brush from Morphe. This is the M213, tiny little brush. And I'm going to dip into the highlight and hit just underneath my eyebrow. And then I will do my little inner corners here. All right, now let's move on to eyeliner. I'm gonna be lining my waterline with a Sinful Colors Stop and Stare Gel Eyeliner Crayon. And this is in the shade Seductive. This is like a pink, like a shimmery pink. I think I'm gonna drag this along the lash line as well on the bottom. Okay, that is fun. Now I need some lips. 
I don't have a lip liner, but what I do have is a cream contour stick. And I'm going to just outline my lips ever so slightly with this to give it kind of a border. And then I'm gonna add one of the glosses that I have. I have several glosses. Okay, and I have three glosses here. I have one that's a really pale pink and it's just high shine lip gloss. Yeah, it basically is just like clear with a tiny tint of pink to it. And then I have one that is a glitter gloss from LA Colors and it's called Gypsy Gems. This is like a orangey pink. Actually, it's just like a pink with gold glitter in it. And then we have Princess Vibes, which is kind of like a holographic gloss. Oh yeah, it comes off like a lavender holographic. I don't know if you can see those. Those are the three glosses here. Mm, I think I'm gonna go with these two glosses. I don't have any lipsticks because like everything was like bright, bright pink or purple. No nudes or anything like that were available. So I went with gloss only. Let me just see what this kind of clear one looks like. Oh, and it smells like vanilla too. Let's see what Gypsy Gems looks like. I'm typically not a really big glitter gloss fan, but I think this is pretty cute, you know, on occasion. What is next? I need to do some eyeliner on the top. Duh. I have a brown Wet n Wild Color Icon Coal Eyeliner Pencil in the shade Sima Brown now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> pushed it. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna line the top lash line with this. Pencil is a little hard to work with, but it's not terrible. And I do like the brown shade. Okay, good to go there. I need to get this gloss off of my hand before I do something I regret. <laughs> Whoops. Now we're moving on to brows. I have an LA Colors Brow Lift Pencil Plus Highlighter, and it's in the shade Light. I don't know what color this is gonna be. It's not super ashy, not super warm. I'd say just kind of a light neutral brown. Um, that should work fine. I'm gonna just keep the eyebrows really simple, just kind of do a little bit of filling in, but nothing crazy. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with the brows. All we have left to do now is mascara. I have an LA Colors Dramatilash Volume Mascara in the shade Black. And of course it has one of those just little cheap brushes. I'm not too confident in this item. We'll see how it goes. Wish me luck. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. There's really nothing to this mascara. I have pretty good lashes and can get away with a lot of different mascaras, but this, mm-mm. Like, I don't know if this is ever going to dry because it's not wanting to build at all. Like, every time you put more product on, it just looks exactly the same. I'm gonna let that kind of get tacky a little bit and see if I can build it up. And I almost bought some fake lashes from the dollar store, but those looked like stiff, like plasticky hell that I did not want to go to. Well, it's not, I guess, terrible. There's just not much to this at all. I have a feeling this mascara would be smudge city within like an hour. Okay, one thing I did forget is highlights. I'm going to take a soft accent brush from Real Techniques. It's kind of dense and I normally wouldn't use it for highlight, but it's kind of the last thing I have over here that makes sense, so let's do it. It's a Real Techniques 421. I'm gonna get a little bit of my highlight, uh, the gold one that we used on the eyes. And when I highlight, I really like to go kind of around my eye, like on my cheekbone like this. 
I feel like this is kind of emphasizing texture on my skin. Definitely liked the look without highlight better. I like it on the lip, like I think that's cute. Not big on this on the cheeks, but honestly that could be due to the texture of the makeup underneath it. I haven't been big on highlighting at all lately, so that's probably also throwing me off, but I've been just going like matte with the skin makeup or I'll put some Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder on just to give a little bit of a glow, but it's not terrible once I've blended it out a bit. Okay, I have one last product and that is some body glitter. Yes, I went there. This is LA Colors and it's Prism Gel and it's in the shade Goddess. Hmm, I don't even know. Body glitter, who am I? I literally never wear body glitter, but okay. Just decided, you know, while we're there, why not? It's just a clear gel with kind of gold and green glitter in it. Oh goodness. Now I know I never wear body glitter because it's ridiculous. This is going to be everywhere for days, I bet. Oh no. <laughs> okay, that's all I have for product. I don't have any setting spray, so this will be the end of the road. Um, let's go through and talk about the products that I would use again and what I wouldn't. I would not use the foundations ever again in my life ever. These are going in the trash immediately. I will not be using the highlight stick that I used underneath my eye. That's an absolute no. I might end up using these powders again. I will probably have to get rid of this one because it's not my shade, but I could actually use this one for some light contouring. So I'll be keeping this baby. This one will have to go elsewhere. I did like this little bronzer and I'm actually gonna keep this to travel with. Same for the blush. The eyeshadow palettes, kind of the same story as the bronzer and blush. I would be less likely to bring these on a trip, but if I needed to have a good color variation and I had like zero space for anything, maybe I would bring them. I don't know about that, but I'll hold on to them for now at least. I would use the Sinful Colors Gel Eyeliner, the pink eyeliner that I used for the waterline. I would definitely use this again. I thought it was really good. I won't be using this brow pencil again simply because it's too chunky. The color was pretty good actually, I have to say, but mm, not for me. The Wet n Wild Coal Crayon Eyeliner, I probably won't use this again. It was simply too difficult to work with and I had to like tug at my eye to get any color laid down, so. Probably a no on that. Um, the uh, smudge pot from e.l.f. I love this. I feel like this is gonna wear really well. Like I'm touching all over it and nothing is transferring onto my finger. So I think this is like a really good dupe for like a MAC paint pot in one of those like metallic shades. Something to lay down first. I think this is a really good base. The e.l.f. Molten Liquid Eyeshadow, I liked it. I mean, it's not like anything to write home about, but I think I would use it again. And also another thing that would be good for a base for other metallic eyeshadows. The mascara is a no for me. It did absolutely nothing for my lashes, so that's going in the trash after this also. I did like the lip oil. The other skin prep products, um, I don't think I'll chunk this, but I don't think it was a great lip scrub. I'll probably use it like as a chapstick, maybe. Um, this, not sure if it helped with my depuffing, but it wasn't terrible and it didn't sting my eyes, so that's good. Jade Roller, of course I'm keeping this because it's cute. The Hyaluronic Acid Serum, the one I have from The Ordinary is 10 million times better than this, so pass on that, but it is cool that they even have something like that at Dollar Tree. Body Glitter, absolutely not. I'm going to go take a shower after this and try to rid my life of the glitter. Uh, the lip glosses, I will absolutely use these again. The only thing that I have left that I had not mentioned yet is that stippling brush that I used to apply foundation from e.l.f. I think I will try that again with some somewhat decent foundation and see if it actually works. So uh, jury's still out on that. But overall, I mean, I think the look is pretty good for just Dollar Tree makeup. I probably spent, you know, 25 bucks on all of this stuff total. All right, we have reached the end of our Dollar Tree journey together. Let me know in the comments what you think of the completed look. 
Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching. And if you have not yet, please subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.